Today, we're finally taking a look at the Skull & Company grip case set that includes the Max Carry case. Stick around. Welcome to Game From A Box, I'm Sergio AM, and we've now had the grip case for a few months, and to sum it up, yes, it's as good as they say, but it's not perfect. Skull & Company launched the grip case for the Nintendo Switch on Kickstarter late last year at a time where a better grip was in high demand for the Switch because Joy-Cons, although we love them, they're just not as comfortable for longer periods of time. At the end of the Kickstarter, the grip case was backed by over 2,000 people who pledged over $90,000 to bring it to life. Now you can find it online and it's sold in a few variations. This review will be based on the grip case set, which includes the Max Carry case. Uh, let's start at the beginning with the box. And here's the box. Uh, as a designer, I see a lot of rules broken here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep that to myself. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in. Skull and Company, grip case for Switch, Max Carry case since this is the set. Happy gaming. Gamers made made for gamers? I'm guessing they mean for gamers by gamers. On the back here, we have all the features of both the grip case and max carry case. Then on the bottom left, you can see that this is the arms edition with neon yellow grips to match the joy cons. Let's open it up. All right, first up the hard shell max carry case with handle and the skull icon zippers. Then inside we have a switch cutout with a quick start guide for the grip case. And here's the star of the show, the flexible and thin grip case with those neon yellow grips. Between the flaps here we have a quick start guide for the max carry case. Then under that we have the extra pair of grips. All right, so that's what you get. Uh, let's talk details. We're gonna talk about the grips next, but first let's check out the case. It's made of a soft and flexible TPU, but it's very thin, so it's not as shock absorbent as a larger case such as the Moomba, but that's for a reason which we'll get to soon. Now installing it is very simple. You simply push in from the shoulder buttons so they don't get damaged, and then you push in from the bottom, and that snaps it right into place. Then we have cutouts for all the ports and vents except for the kickstand at the back and the IR reader at the bottom. But two things. First, the volume and power buttons are covered for protection, but still work well enough. And second, the headphone port at the top is a bit small, so headphones with a thicker plastic above the jack won't be compatible. Now, one thing they approached differently were the shoulder buttons. Unlike other cases, this one covers them for protection, but in doing so, they now feel slightly different, and we found that it takes a bit more force to actuate them, especially L and R. That also led to a rare issue during intense gameplay. If you press too fast and hard on the Z buttons, they can actually slip off the corner. It only happened to us twice, so just don't hulk out on it and you'll be fine. Another thing about this case is that it's one of the thinnest out there, because back on the Kickstarter, Skull & Company's original goal was to make it dockable, hence the cutouts for the pegs at the bottom. But there was one really big problem. Due to complaints, they found that some docks were bent inward, which would create a tighter fit for the precisely engineered grip case. Uh, there's no easy way to solve that, so now they don't claim that it's compatible with the official dock, even though it still says it on the old box. So although it works with the dock we got at launch, keep in mind that it may not work for yours. Alright, now on to the grips. Right off the bat, you can tell they spent a lot of time with R&D because these work well for different size hands and they feel familiar to that of traditional controllers. In the box, we get two sets. First is the snap grip, which is rounded out and works best for normal sized hands, but it's still big enough for your fingers to wrap around. Our favorite is the second set, which is the bigger trigger grip that they say provides a stronger grip force and it's meant for larger hands, such as the ones that I have. At the top, it has a similar indent to that of the Z buttons for you to rest your middle finger on, which is very comfortable. Overall, we found that both sets truly improve your grip, but I wish they were angled out a bit more towards the sides so we wouldn't have to extend our thumbs in an awkward way to reach the lower face buttons and analog stick. 
Now, installing them is very simple. On the back, we have these hooks that attach very securely to the case. Once they pop in, they can be easily removed from the inside by simply pinching them together. Both sets of grips are available in various colors, and yes, you can buy them separately. As for materials, as you can hear, they're made of a hard polycarbonate plastic, but with different textures. The snap grip has a pattern of small dimples, and the trigger grip is covered in these tiny little dots. Both add a very minimal amount of friction, but I wish the textures were either more pronounced or made of a softer plastic like the TPU on the case. Regardless, they still work because your fingers wrap around them, and that's what improves your grip. Now, being that they're removable, in the future, they can create other versions of these grips with better textures, materials, etc., and sell them separately, which I really hope they do. Being that the grips add to the size of the Switch, as you can see, you're going to need a larger case. That's why we went with the set that includes the Max Carry case. At first glance, it looks like a large hard shell case, but it's designed with the grips in mind. Let's take a look. Not much to say about the exterior. As you can see, it's blacked out except for the zippers, which come in neon blue and red with the Skull & Company logo. Now inside, we first have an elastic mesh compartment for cables, earbuds, and other accessories. Then we have two flaps. The top one has 10 card slots at the front and a microfiber back to protect the screen. The second flap has a tab that attaches to the first flap via Velcro to secure the switch in between, and it also serves as a divider and a stand. As you can see, it sits on these sawtooth rails, and you can fold the flap into multiple positions to use your switch in tabletop mode. We found that this works best if you have extra Joy-Cons, because if not, you have to take off the case, remove the Joy-Cons, and slide in the console, which is a bit of a hassle. Now, below the second flap, between the rails, we have extra storage for things like Joy-Cons and other accessories, but you can also store a portable battery like the Ghoulie Kit Power Brick we mentioned in our previous video. This is awesome because that means you can play and charge your Switch in tabletop mode. Overall, the Skull & Company grip case system is versatile, well-built, and beautifully designed. But most importantly, it improves on the feel and experience of the Switch in handheld mode. But, as I said in the beginning, it's not perfect. I wish they didn't cover up the shoulder buttons because although I appreciate the protection, it's just not worth making these buttons more difficult to use. The other issue is that it's not compatible with every dock out there but I can't really blame them for it since they no longer mention that on the product page. Now, if you always take the Switch on the go, the grip case set that includes the large Max Carry case is definitely worth your consideration because most cases won't be compatible with the grip case attached. As you can see, it's just too big. But the good thing is that it also serves as a charge in play stand, so that's a huge plus. All right, so you heard the good and the bad, but it's up to you to balance it out. Let us know what you think of the Skull & Company grip case down in the comments below. If you want to help us grow, share this video with your friends, check out the affiliate links down in the description, and most importantly, subscribe and hit that friggin' bell icon because uh, we're checking out Labo next, which uh, I'm not the biggest fan of, followed by some very, very weird Switch accessories and a lot more. I'm Sergio IM, and as always, I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM, and I'll see you for the next box.